Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria and today I'm going to give you some recommendations for books for the fall. It is October. It is fully into the fall. I normally do this video in September but I just never got around to it for September so we're doing it in October which is a little late especially for some of the recommendations but it's still fall. It's starting to feel very much like fall. I'm wearing long sleeves now. It's September. We had a very hot September where I live and so most of September was still felt like summer to me. Um, it still felt like very warm. I wasn't like feeling cozy like fall. I feel very cozy in the fall. Um, it's like sweaters and long sleeves and hot chocolate and stuff like that and I felt like September was very like warm for here. Regardless, I'm going to give you some recommendations to read during the fall. Um, first, I want to say I'm really sorry for all of the cat hair. If you can see it, it's like literally flying around. I just brushed my cats. So there's cat hair all over my shirt and my top. Um, so I'm so sorry about that if you can see it because it's just life of a cat owner. Um, it's everywhere. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to get into some of the recommendations for reading in the fall. Uh, so I obviously had to include some paranormal wrecks on here because fall is very paranormal energy. You have Halloween, you have spooky season, so I have a couple of those. Okay, so the first one that I have is some paranormal books. This is the first five books in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. They're the ones that I own um, and they're all together, so that's why I pulled them off my shelf all together. But the one that I'm going to recommend is the first one, which is... If I can get it out of the thing, is Dark Lover by J.R. Ward. This is a vampire series. It is a group of vampire guys called the Black Dagger Brotherhood. They are vampires who kill these bad guys that exist. Um, and so this book is book one, and it follows Wrath, who is a pure blood vampire. He's like one of the last pureblood vampires to exist and he is the leader of the Black Tiger Brotherhood and he ends up having a romance with a heroine who is the daughter of one of his fighters. One of his fighters dies in the very beginning and he tells Wrath to take care of his daughter um, and his daughter is uh, an adult she's not young, she's an adult, but her name is Beth and she is half vampire, half human, and she doesn't know that. Um, and so he goes, helps her, and she ends up um, having a romance with the leader of the Black Dagger Brotherhood and she gets introduced to the whole world of vampires and it's so good. It's so good. It's just that one of those, when I read this book um, and this whole series, I read it in 2019 or 2020 and I was like fully expecting it to be kind of like ridiculous. It was so good. I gave so many of them like such high ratings. I was loved this series and I really honestly need to do a reread. I want to get my best friend to read it so maybe I'll do a reread while she reads it. Um, but it is such a fun series. I read the first I think eight or nine in the series. It has a ridiculously long series um, and I think that Zadist is probably my favorite. I think he's book four or five um, but the whole series is so good <laughs> um, and I would highly recommend trying it out. Okay, so the next one I have is another paranormal one, and that is uh, the Stay a Spell series by Juliet Cross. This is book one. It is Wolf Gone Wild, but this whole series is really, really good. It, if each book follows another one of the Savoie sisters, and they are witch sisters who live in New Orleans, and each book is each sister's romance, and so this is the first one. It is Livy and Matteo. No, it isn't. It is Evie. Evie and Mateo. Livy is with the Grimm later on. This is Evie and Mateo and in this one it really starts off the whole series. The uh, heroine Evie is the kind of witch that can help undo curses and so when Mateo, this uh, werewolf shifter, shows up at um, her door, he basically is like, I think there's a curse put on me because he is unable to shift. He hasn't been able to shift and he has, hears his 
wolf in his head. He has this alternate personality, alternate voice in his head, his wolf called Alpha. And so this book is actually almost three perspectives because you get Mateo's perspective, you get Evie's perspective, but you also get uh, some chapters from Alpha's perspective, which is so interesting. And I love Alpha. Um, but basically, Mateo asks Evie to help him get this curse cat hair help him get this curse off of him and Evie's sisters are very apprehensive about it because witches don't trust werewolves they're known to be very violent and um they are not trusted by the witches and Evie being somebody who is very sweet and just wants to help people she offers um to help Mateo she wants to help him and they end up having a romance and it's super good I love the whole series I love the like world that um Juliet Cross creates New Orleans is just like the perfect setting for this and it, it totally gives fall with the very cozy type paranormal they're not like the scary type paranormal this is the type of like uh Halloween books that I would normally read I'm not a spooky girl I don't like scary things um and so this is like the perfect fun sweet um with just that like little touch of danger in each of the books perfect for fall okay so the next one that i have is a fantasy i guess it is what i would call a cozy fantasy and it's house in the cerulean sea by tj clune this is one of my top favorite books from 2020 i believe i absolutely adore this book and it is about a hero who uh, works for, what does he work for? The Department of Magical Youth. Um, and he is a caseworker there. He's basically like a social worker for the Department of Magical Youth. And he is incredibly by the book. He has like future thoughts of, I might want to go on a vacation sometime, or I might want to do this sometime. But he never really does it. He's very stuck in a rut. He very follows every single rule. He's very black and white. Um, and he works for the Department of Magical y Youth and he likes completely um, and utterly follows the letter of the law and he gets assigned to visit this orphanage in the house in the Cerulean Sea um, and it's an orphanage for magical youth and he gets there and finds out that this is an orphanage that is has a lot of very rare very uh, powerful magical youth um, and he has his entire worldview changed by these children and by the caretaker of the orphanage and he learns and understands more of the world and gets his whole worldview his perspective shifted by meeting these people and understanding what more what they go through and not just sitting behind a desk and telling them these are the laws this is all I can do for you he very much gets his life shifted and it is so so good it has that utterly cozy vibe to it which is why I'm saying that it's very fall like I said in the beginning of this video I feel like fall is very cozy curl up in bed in a sweater with a book and a blanket and a hot chocolate and reading this book and it would be like the perfect fall day so I absolutely love this book and I would highly recommend trying it out. Um, it has t like fantasy elements to it, but it's not like overly difficult fantasy, you know. So like I said, I call it cozy fantasy and I would recommend it. Okay, so the next one that I have or the next two that I have are very much when I read them, they give me fall vibes, which is why I put them on this list. The first one is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. This one is about a girl named Kala who lives in big city Canada and she basically uh, was raised by a single mom. Um, her father kind of dipped or never really was a part of her life when she was younger and she gets a phone call from a, a woman who works for her father letting her know that her father has cancer and is um, very sick and might die um, and is basically like your father wants you to come and see him. Um, and so she contemplates this because she has a very difficult relationship with her father but she decides that she would regret it if she didn't go and see her dad and so she goes to Alaska where her dad lives where he owns this kind of uh 
he flies planes, like small planes, and he owns this business where he flies small planes. Um, and she gets there and it is like middle of fucking nowhere, middle of the woods, Alaska, and she is not used to it. She has never been in the woods, never been with the wildlife, never not had like a coffee shop on each corner kind of situation. She does not know what to do. It's very out of her comfort zone and she has a opposites attract romance with a guy who works for her father's company who also flies planes and they end up being sort of neighbors while she's staying in Alaska. They push each other's buttons to no end and they end up having this really nice romance and I really enjoyed this book. Um, it is just very outdoorsy vibes and I always think of like when you're thinking of fall you're very much thinking how pretty the outdoors is with the leaves changing and it's getting colder and stuff and so I really liked the like scenery in this, the descriptions in this, and I feel like it's very fall energy. Okay the next one that I have um, is Bittersweet by Serena Bowen. This is part of the True North series. So it takes place, this is book one actually in the True North series, and it takes place in Vermont. Um, so the hero in this, his name is Griffin, and he uh, runs his family's farm. Um, his name is, uh, he's, it's the Shipley Farms. His last name is Shipley. Um, and he runs Shipley Farms. He is the oldest of his siblings. His father died when he was younger um, and he's the oldest of his siblings so he runs this farm and he has a lot of ideas of what he wants to turn this farm into and how he wants to continue like growing the farm. Um, and one of those things is he has apple orchards and he grow decides to grow cider apples and make cider um, and uh, like alcoholic cider. and. It is such amazing fall energy, like outside apple orchards, growing, uh, being on the farm, and then making cider and drinking apple cider. Like it's just like perfect fall energy. Um, and basically in this book, this girl uh, named Audrey, Audrey, shows up at his farm and it turns out that she and him went to college together. They knew each other but she now works for a restaurant in the city and is up in, she's up in the rural area where the farms are to try and get local uh, uh, farm grown foods to bring back to this restaurant but the prices that she's offering are crap um, and so Griffin very much is like absolutely not and she, he really makes her life more difficult. He like calls up all of his friends who own the farms and is like don't sell to this girl she's not giving you a good price um, and she is super angry at him and they end up in a grumpy hero romance and they have very it's another one of like opposites attract. They're very different um, but on the surface they're very different. Audrey has a lot of like baggage um, from growing up, from her family, from her mom, and so she just kind of needs a second chance. She's really struggling. Um, she doesn't really know what she wants to do with her life at this point. She is a chef, but she's currently like working in a crappy restaurant, like as like a, not as a chef, she's not doing like what she loves. Um, and she and Griffin have like amazing chemistry and so putting them together they they cannot keep their hands off each other and it is just so good so fun and the whole series is fantastic each of the following books follow other members of the Shipley clan and other members who happen to work on the Shipley farms and it's so good and I would highly recommend the whole series. Okay so the last two books are Ones that I really think of when I think fall. When I personally think of fall, one of the things that I always think of is school. Going back to school, having to be in school. Um, it's just very much like school energy. And so I have two books that follow schools. So I have one that's Lessons in Sin because the other thing that I start reading more and more in fall and winter as it gets colder is dark romance. I love dark romance in the fall and in the winter um, as the cold weather. Cold weather to me equals dark romance. I don't know why. Um, but especially during spooky season, like I said, I don't do scary books. I do dark books. Um, and so this is a forbidden age gap 
taboo romance between a heroine and her uh, headmaster at her Catholic school who is also a priest. Um, his name is Father Magnus and the heroine is very, um, her parents are pissed off at her. She keeps getting into trouble and so they send her to this Catholic school that basically is um, known for setting people in line um, and it's run by Magnus, Father Magnus, and she and him end up having a taboo age gap completely forbidden relationship and it's dark it's uh really good it's sexy um it has that like they shouldn't be together but like you want them to be together kind of energy and it's just really good and i would highly recommend it student teacher love it the other one that i have that is school energy is see me after class by megan quinn which is a completely different vibe than um uh lessons in sin but it also takes place at a school these this one follow is a grumpy sunshine romance and it follows two teachers um it is a romance between the two teachers one of them the heroine is a very new teacher she's embraced a lot of like newer ideas of teaching um very uh contemporary newer energy of a teacher um, and the other one the hero is a very traditional style teacher he lectures he is quiet he wants the kids to be quiet he very much follows a lesson plan and the structure and he likes everything in a box the way it should be and the heroine likes to be loud she likes to do demonstrations she likes to show videos she likes to talk to the students and get their opinions and their energy and what they're feeling and uh their classrooms are right next to each other and he does not like that she makes so much noise he doesn't like that she doesn't like teach like he does um and he she doesn't fit into the box that he has and it pisses him off and it pushes the buttons um and he is also her best friend's brother um and so it is just a really fun really really good um t romance between two teachers it's grumpy sunshine it's not really enemies to lovers but it's like that like dislike to lovers they get off on the wrong foot they don't really enjoy each other in the beginning um but they grow to have so much sexual chemistry so much energy so much fire between them and i love it would highly recommend that's the last one that i have though those are some fall recommendations i hope that you find one that you enjoy um fall is my favorite season so i have so many books on my tbr that i'm really excited to read during the fall um so let me know down below what's your favorite kind of books to read in the fall because i know that some people like paranormal some people like thrillers some people like dark romance let me know um but that's going to be it for this video so like this video if you liked it subscribe stick around see more content from me and i hope that you have the absolute best day bye